We are pleased to welcome to our stage our brother, our friend, master storyteller, Gerald DePega. The first story is called Fighting, and this is chapter one. I'm a teenager sitting at a counter of a diner with two of my friends. Picture this at night. Picture me about 15. The place is almost empty, and the woman behind the counter seems old to me. Probably she's 50. I must be drinking a chocolate malt because I always was, and still today at 68. I treat myself when enough months have gone by to this, the perfect food. Three guys come in, our age. We don't know them, from a different high school. They pass behind us, and one of them gives me an elbow hard in the back as he walks by and he swaggers as he walks. Everybody sees this and I wonder what I'm going to do. I've never had a fight except the fights that don't count when you're nine and 10 and you shove and wrestle at recess and nobody gets hurt. You understand, I can't allow this boy to shame me. That's what my friends and I are afraid of. Not afraid of actual fighting, though we are untested. And not so much afraid of being hurt as being shamed. So I say in a roughened voice, what the hell's the matter with you? He smiles, and they take seats at the counter, leaving one empty space between the two groups. There's a mirror behind the counter. He makes his dirty smile into the mirror and asks, you don't like it? What are you going to do about it? Everybody in the place is nervous except this kid with the mouth, with the swagger. The air is thick now. A fly couldn't pass through it. The tension has gelled that much. I think of something to say that's not quite a commitment and launch these words into the dense neon air. A real tough guy, huh? That's right, he says. Everybody looks at me, the woman too. It's up to me to be silent now or to make a comeback. Silence would mean he won and that I was intimidated and scared. I am scared, but I try not to act scared. And I say, amazingly, we just had an assembly today about guys like you who have to push people around so everybody will think they're tough. This confuses everyone. <laughs> we had had an assembly. Some speaker, a priest, I think, who came out of the Chicago neighborhoods and was doing the Lake Town schools now, talking about bullies. The dirty smile doesn't know what to say. I think he mutters, so what? And then we all drink our malts and Cokes. Even my friends who have finished their Cokes pretend to sip very slowly with hard eyes into the mirror so they can seem like tough guys just in case. <laughs> but I know they're scared, just like me, and just like the other two who came in with the tough guy. One of them asks the dirty smile a question in a low voice he thinks I can't hear, but I hear. You gonna fight him? I can take him, Dirty Smile says. The boy who asked him now stares at me and then turns back to the Dirty Smile and says importantly, he shaves. <laughs> I shave every day, every other day, with my father's electric razor and I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I finish my malt even though I can't taste it anymore. I put some money on the counter, my friends do too. I stand up, now it's up to Dirty Smile. Here's where he has to call a fight or let it go. He says something very low to his friends. One of them laughs, I look at them. They're not looking at me. The woman is looking at me, handing me my change. I put out my hand. She puts the change in my hand and then she grasps my hand and my eyes move to meet hers. It's just a loving squeeze of my fingers. And then she goes back to work. I think I nod to her, but I'm not sure she sees it. We all file out the door. Outside, my friends are excited by the close call and talking tough now as we move to the car. But I'm quiet, feeling the pressure of the woman's fingers and seeing a whole sad universe in her one second stare and feeling warmed too by a blessing that still comes back to me with every treasured chocolate malt. 